So, what's going on guys, KDC here and for today we are taking a closer look at the ultimate weapons guide. So this means that we will try out one weapon per every weapon category and I will explain the best playstyle, what abilities should you use and what are the best two build choices. So if you want to see every single weapon category in the game, so it will be easier for you to choose a weapon and a build that you want to play, then this is the video that you've been looking for. And last but not the least, I can imagine that we will look into about 15 different weapons. So, if you are just looking for one specific one, check the timestamps in the description and without any further ado, let's get right into it. Then moving over to the first weapon category which is the one and only, Swords. So first of all this weapon category includes Broadsword, Claymore, Kingmaker, Dual Swords, Claren Blade, Carving Sword and Galatine Pair. And the best overall build that you should use, no matter which sword you pick, is on the weapon first while you want to choose the second Q ability, then the fourth W and first passive. Then for the headgear you go with the guardian's helmet and third ability and first passive. Then for the chest armor I have the cleric rope and third ability and first passive. Then lastly for shoes you go with the soldier boots and pick the first ability and second passive. Then for the cape, you go with the Tetford cape and for consumables use the stew and poison potions. And then as far as your gameplay goes, swords are super simple. Your main objective is to attack a player by hitting him with 3 Q abilities and then use your E, which if you have those 3 stacks will do massive amount of damage. And then as for the W, you basically use it as a stun to get players stuck in one position. And the rest of the abilities are simple defensive spells. But yeah, the main playstyle of swords is hitting 3 Qs, then using your E ability and repeating the same process. And then moving over to the second weapon category, which are the axes, and that includes Battle Axe, Great Axe, Realm Breaker, Halberd, Carrion Collar, Infernal Sight, and Beer Puffs. And as for the weapon, you want to use the second Q ability and second W. And lastly, the first passive. Then for the helmet you use the cultist scale and pick the third ability and first passive. Then for the chest piece you use the mercenary jacket and go with the third ability and first passive. Then for the shoes you pick the soldier boots and go with the first ability and second passive. Then as for the cape you pick the tetford cape and for consumables go with the cabbage soup and poison potions. Ok and then as far as the gameplay goes, the axes are meant to do a lot of bleed damage over time so your main goal is to keep using your Q's and W's to gain an extra damage and keep on applying bleed effect which will damage the player every second. And then as soon as the enemy is below 40% health, you use the E ability, dealing massive amounts of damage and all of this is done in one AOE. So no matter what, if you are just fighting a 1v1 or 5v5, you will do a lot of serious damage all around you. And lastly, whenever you get low health, pop the R ability, which every time that you hit someone will get back up your health. And lastly, use the D ability on a target when he is about to deal a lot of damage as the spell will damage that player every single time he attacks you. So overall the axes are super broken and very good choice for 1v1s or even AOV pain farming. Then as for the mace category, here we have a bunch of weapons for mainly tanks and that includes one hand mace, incubus mace, heavy mace, camelan mace, morning star, bedrock mace and oath keepers. As this weapon category is primarily meant for full tank builds, I will give you one good tank build and one good 1v1 DPS build. So for the mace DPS build, for the weapon you go with the second Q and second W and first passive. And for your offhand you have the mist color. Then for the headgear choose the cultist scowl and third ability and first passive. Then for the chest armor pick the assassin's jacket and third ability and first passive. Then lastly for boots go with the assassin shoes and pick the first ability and second passive. Then for the cape go with the carillion cape and for food pick the stew and poison potions. And the main playstyle for maze dps build is at the beginning of the fight use the ambush ability and whenever you're ready use your w plus q ability and then use poison potions with placing the d ability on an enemy as well. And when he starts running pop the e ability which will do a lot of damage and you will leap in front of the target. So as a maze DPS build your main objective is to annoy the enemy and with the tank weapon abilities he won't be able to run away from you. But then moving over to the build that you are most likely looking for if you want to use any maze weapon as a tank roll. So for the weapon this time you want to use the third Q, second W and first passive. And for the offhand you have the miscolor. 
Then for the headgear, go with the Guardian's helmet and third ability and first passive. Then for the chest piece, pick the Guardian's armor and third ability and first passive. Then lastly for boots, go with the hunter shoes and pick third ability and fourth passive. Then as for the cape, go with the Martlock cape and for consumables, pick the sandwich and resistance potions. And then your playstyle as for any tank is to soak up the damage and annoy the enemy damage dealers. So when the enemy players are clumped up, leap towards them with your W and then use Q, which will immediately silence them. Then you can do the same thing with the E ability, but this time when leaping use the R ability, which will create a circle in which the enemy standing will do a lot less damage. So yeah, overall the maces are super good choice for tanks and you can't definitely go wrong with this build. Then, now we have come to the fourth weapon category, aka the hammers, and that includes One Hand Hammer, Great Hammer, Hand of Justice, Tom Hammer, Paul Hammer, Forge Hammer, and Grove Keeper. And as hammers are meant to be tanks, but deal as well a bunch of damage, I will give you one full hammer DPS build and one medium DPS slash tank hammer build. So, for the full DPS build, for the weapon you go with the third Q, second W, and first passive. Then for the helmet you pick the Mage Cow, and go with the third ability and first passive. Then for the chest armor you go with the assassin's jacket and pick the third ability and first passive. And then lastly for boots go with the hunter shoes and pick third ability and second passive. Then for the cape go with the Tedford cape and for consumables go with the cabbage soup and poison potions. And then for more tanky hammer build we go with the exact same stuff just different helmet and chest armor. So for the helmet you go with the guardian's helmet and pick third ability and first passive. And for the chest armor, go with the armor of valor and pick third ability and first passive. And as both hammer builds are built the same, just one is a bit more tanky and meant for ZVZ and open world PvP, where the other one is more DPS hammer, which is more meant for 1v1s and ganking, so their playstyle is basically the same. So for the hammers, you don't want to worry about no stacking or anything like that. You just simply use your Q for dealing damage in 3 meter radius and then use W and E which are just simple dashes that will deal damage plus slow or stun the enemy. So then you keep on rotating all around these three spells while using R to become invisible to rush into the fights or get out of them and then the ability to apply poison effect on your weapon. And then last but not the least, don't forget to charge in in your fights with the boots aka the F ability. Then, now we have come to the 5th weapon category, which are the one and only crossbows, and that includes the normal crossbow, energy shaper, heavy crossbow, siege bow, light crossbow, weeping repeater and bolt casters. So then for the weapons, you want to go with the second Q, first W and first passive. Then you pick the mage cal and choose the third ability and first passive. Then for chest armor, pick the assassin's jacket and go with the second ability and first passive. And lastly for shoes, go with the soldier boots and pick the first ability and second passive. Then for my cape, I went with the Tedford cape and for consumables, I went with the dangle mouth catfish and healing potions. And then as for the gameplay, your main strength is to do a lot of damage, but still be tanky enough to survive the incoming attacks. So you do not really have to run away or try to evade the enemies. So what you do is shoot your Q's and E's whenever you have the option to do so which will deal damage in 3 to 5 meter radius. Then basically pop the D ability which will apply a poison effect on your normal attacks. And lastly use the R ability to reduce the incoming damage and only use W to interrupt a casting spell. Or just in case you need to run away. So the crossbows are basically like bows, just they don't deal as much damage in few seconds, but they do more damage consistently over the fight. So if you enjoy ranged DPS but don't like bows that much then crossbows are definitely for you. Then moving over to the half brother of crossbows which are the bows. And that includes the normal bow, mist piercer, wailing bow, bow of badan, war bow, long bow and whispering bow. And then for the build which will work for all the bows is first of all you pick the weapon which is the third Q, first W and fourth passive. Then for my head armor you go with the hellion hood and pick the third ability and second passive. Then for the chest armor go with the cleric's robe and third ability and first passive. And then for shoes pick the soldier boots and go with the third ability and second passive. Then for the cape, pick the Tedford cape and for consumables get the stew and resistance potions. And then as for the boss playstyle, it is actually 100 IQ build, where you just simply use your Q, then W and E spell. 
And lastly, pop the D ability and stand in a cloud while auto attacking the enemy to death. So basically what we just did, we used all of our main damage spells and went into the smoke bomb, which means that for the next couple of seconds, you will do a lot of damage while the player won't be able to see you or do any damage to you whatsoever. And if this spell combo still doesn't one shot the enemy player, then keep on kiting and using R and F ability whenever the enemy gets too close to you. Then taking a closer look at one of my most favorite weapon categories which are the spears and that includes one hand spear, heron spear, daybreaker, pike, glaive, spirit hunter and trinity spear. And then moving over to the build for the weapon we pick the first Q, last W and fourth passive. And for the offhand we get the taproot. Then for the head armor go with the mage cowl and pick the third ability and first passive. Then for the chest armor get the assassin's jacket and use the second ability and first passive. Then lastly for shoes go with the soldier boots and pick the first ability and second passive. Then for my cape I went with the Tetford cape and for consumables I have the roasted pure mist snapper and healing potions. So first of all all the spears are melee bruisers that are good for close to even medium range DPS. So similar to swords you mainly want to use your Q three times and then use the E ability. And then of course in between that don't forget to apply poison effect on your weapon with the D ability and catch the targets and pull them back with your W. So in conclusion spears are very high tier weapons which builds costs a little bit more than per usual but they are very good in 1v1 corrupted dungeons or even open world ganking. So check them out and I hope you enjoy it. Then now we have come to the first healer class aka the nature staff category and that includes the normal nature staff, iron root staff, druidic staff, great nature staff, blight staff, rampant staff and wild staff. And again as this is a support class I will give you the best overall nature healer build and then the best 1v1 build. So first of all going over to the nature staff's 1v1 build for the weapon you pick the second Q, third W and first passive. Then for the helmet you go with the cultist scale and pick the third ability and first passive. Then for the chest armor pick the mercenary jacket and go with the third ability and first passive. And lastly for boots go with the scholar sandals and pick the second ability and second passive. Then for your capes you go with the martlock cape and for consumables pick the omelette and resistance potions. And then for the fully on healer build for the staff this time we go with the first Q, third W and first passive. Then for the helmet pick the mercenary hood and third ability and first passive. And then for your chest armor get the cleric robe and pick the third ability and first passive. And then the rest things stay the same like in the other build. And then for the nature staff's 1v1 builds playstyle you just simply want to stay alive and let the enemy hit you as much as he can. So you keep on applying Q's and W's and E's on yourself while putting the ability on the enemy and allowing him to deal damage onto you which will in return do damage on him so your objective is to survive and let the other player do all the damage on himself. But then if you're using the healer support build you just simply want to use your Q's and W's and even E's on your teammates while trying to stay out of trouble by using the R and D defensives. And whenever you run out of energy pop the boots. So overall the nature staffs are very strong and good healing players. And if you want to check them out then here they are. Then with that said now we have come to the weapon category that all the solo players love and use which are the daggers. And that includes the one hand dagger, then the dagger pair, gloves, blood letter, black hands, dead givers and bradley fury. And then for all the weapon best builds, first of all the dagger you pick the second Q, fifth W and first passive. And for offhand go with the creep candle. Then for the helmet go with the mage cowl and choose the third ability and first passive. Then for the chest armor pick the cleric robe and go with the third ability and first passive. And lastly for shoes get the minor work boots with the third ability. Then for the cape get the Tetford cape and for consumables use the stew and poison potions. And then as daggers are the highest mobility weapons in the game your main goal is to keep on using Q and W's at least for the blood letter. And when the target is below 40% health use the E. But for different weapons use the E of course in a different way but the rest stays the same. So then don't forget to apply poison potions and poison effect on your weapon with the D ability. And lastly for defensives use R and F ability. 
So, all in all, daggers are super fun and more commonly used for solo players, as the movement, aka the mobility, is very high with good damage and good running away possibility. Then for our next weapon category, we have the quarter staffs, and that includes the normal quarter staff, grail seeker, ironclad staff, double bladed staff, black monk staff, soul sight, and staff of balance. So then like per usual for the weapon abilities, we pick the second Q, second W, and first passive. Then for the helmet, you go with the mage cowl, and second ability, and first passive. Then for the chest gear, pick the armor of valor, and third ability, and first passive. And lastly for boots, get the hunter shoes with the third ability and second passive. Then however for the cape, get the demon cape and for consumables, get the avalonian beef stew and poison potions. So first of all, yes, quarter staffs can be decent tanks, but in recent updates they've been getting nerfed, so here we have a tank slash DPS build. But if these quarter staff tanks ever come back to the meta, just switch the helmet and a cape for guardian's helmet, and something like Fort Sterling cape, and you should be good to go. But besides that, the playstyle like in any tank is mainly to interrupt the enemy spells and annoy slash block them as much as you can. So you use your Q's, W's and E's to leap to the enemies, then stun them and then use the D ability to throw them in either direction. A lot of times if you play Hellgates or ZVZs by just being in the enemy backline and then randomly stunning them and throwing to your teammates can delete them just in seconds. And in previous updates, Quarter staffs were very well known for that, and then of course for your own slash team protection, don't forget to use the R ability, which if any enemy hits you, he will silence him and reflect the damage. So overall, if you like spinning and your main weapon being stuns 24-7, then quarter staff weapon category is definitely for you. Then for all of my fire mages, coming up next here we have the fire staff weapon category, and that includes one hand fire staff, wild fire staff, great fire staff, brimstone staff, infernal staff, blazing staff, and dawn song. And for the overall best build, for the weapon abilities we go with the first Q, first W, and then the third passive. Then for offhand we go with the taproot, and for my helmet I get the clear cal and pick the third ability and first passive. Then for my chest piece we get the second ability and first passive. And lastly for shoes we get the soldier boots and pick the first ability and second passive. Then for my cape I chose the morgana cape and for consumables we go with the omelet and poison potions. And then as far as the gameplay goes, as any DPS mage caster, you just want to use your Q, W and E spells whenever you can. And for defensives use the R and D ability. The main objective of fire staffs is to come facing your enemy from the start and try to kill them as fast as possible. Because being a mage gives you a huge amount of damage, but on the other hand you are very squishy and take more incoming damage than the other builds. So if you enjoy this high damage low health weapon then the fire staffs are definitely for you. Then taking a closer look at the second healer weapon category aka the holy staffs. And that includes the one hand holy staff, hollow fall, life touch staff, great holy staff, fallen staff, redemption staff and divine staff. So then moving over to the build for the holy staff we choose the first Q, first W and then the last fourth passive. Then for my helmet I pick the mercenary hood and go with the third ability and first passive. Then for my chest armor I pick the cleric robe and go with the third ability and first passive. And lastly for boots, I go with the scholar sandals and pick the second ability and second passive. Then for my cape, I pick the limhurst cape and for my consumables, I use the omelet and poison potions. So when you decide to become a healer, you can either way focus on multiple targets on medium output healing or single target high output healing. And holy staffs are the second choice. So like in any other healing build, you use your cues on the player that needs the most healing. And when the other teammates are grouped up and close, use the W and E for AOV healing. And then for your own protection, you have the R and D ability. So many times in 5v5s, players like to focus on healers, first of all. So this build is built around surviving but still doing a lot of healing. So if you think that this healer playstyle fits you better, choose one of the holy staffs and have fun. Then for one of the last weapon categories on the list we have the one and only arcane staffs and that includes the one hand arcane staff, witch work staff, great arcane staff, acolyte staff, enigmatic staff, male volant locus and event song. 
and then taking a closer look at the build, for the weapon we picked the second Q and second W and first passive. And then for the offhand I decided to go with the miscolor. Then for the head armor I went with the Judy Carrier's armor and third ability and first passive. Then for the chest gear I go with the Guardian's armor and pick the third ability and first passive. And lastly for shoes I chose the soldier boots and pick the first ability and second passive. Then for my cape of choice I pick the Carolian cape. And for consumables I chose the sandwich and poison potions. And then as you are a tank slash support player your main objective is to use Q spells on yourself and teammates. So you would apply the shield and for the rest of the abilities like the W, E, R and D use all of them in no matter which order so just drain their energy, reduce damage and silence them or stun them. To be honest it is very rarely when I see a arcane support player but if you usually do then those players know what they are doing and can outplay the other team. So if you are a experienced player and know what you are doing then for sure I recommend to check the arcane staffs. Then moving over to the 14th weapon category aka the frost staffs and that includes the one hand frost, chill hell, or frost staff, great frost staff, glacial staff, icicle staff and permafrost prism. And then taking a closer look at the build, for the weapon you want to pick the third Q, second W and third passive. And for the offhand you go with the tome of spells, then for the helmet pick the cleric cal with the third ability first passive. Then for the chest armor go with the mage robe and third ability and first passive. And last but not the least, for the boots go with the mage sandals and pick the first ability and second passive. Then for my choice of capes I picked the Morgana cape and for consumables I chose the omelets and healing potions. So this is by far the most fun slash unique weapon category I have ever used over my 3-4 to four years with Albion. So if you are that player that is looking to be a mage DPS with having the ability to teleport and deal a lot of damage from afar then frost stuffs are definitely for you. So basically your goal is to spam your Qs while at the same time activating the E ability which not only will deal damage but as well activate your cape and you'll be able to spam hundreds of different spells in a few seconds. And then lastly for defensives, teleport all around using your W and pop R or D ability whenever the damage is about to come from the enemy. So in my conclusion, like I said previously, if you want to be a mage and a huge damage dealer from afar, then for sure check one of the frost apps out and I hope you enjoy them. And with all of this said, now we've come to the final weapon category aka the curse staffs and that includes the one hand curse staff, shadow color, life curse staff, great curse staff, damnation staff, demonic staff and curse skull. And the build is for the weapon, you pick the first ability, then the fourth W and first passive. Then for the head armor, go with the third ability and first passive. Then for the chest armor, go with the mercenary jacket and pick the third ability and first passive. And for shoes go with the demon boots and pick the third ability and second passive. Then for the cape you go with the Tetford cape and for consumables use the dangle mouth catfish and poison potions. But then moving over to the playstyle for curse stuffs it only matters on how much poison effect you can apply. So your main objective is to first of all apply W on yourself and then use bunch of Qs. And when the target is in one direction or coming at you directly use the E ability. To either way make him turn around or deal a lot of damage and then when you start getting low health use the R ability which then every hit you do the enemy will heal you. And to disengage a fight or protect yourself for a few seconds use the D or R ability. But all in all curse staffs are meant as decent damage dealers but with huge survivability and the ability to apply vile curse staffs to the enemies which deals damage to them every single second. So for sure try one of the curse staffs out and I hope you have fun. And that's about it. I really do appreciate everyone for watching guys and I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any good ideas, feedback or different video suggestions that you would like me to make, feel free to comment them in the comment section down below. And while you're doing that, please click like, subscribe and enable that notification bell. So this way you could support the channel and you won't miss any more amazing content from me. With all of this said, you have an amazing day and I will catch you in the next one. So take it easy. Peace. Yo, I ain't here for the money.